Hello and welcome back. In this video, we will discuss envelope rejection sampling and we will consider an example to get a run through to all of the steps required to use this method in practice. So let's get going. What I want to do is, like I hinted already at in the picture, I want to show you how to generate normal distributed samples. So let's make use of what we just said we can do. Let's pretend we don't know the normalizing constant. Let's say f of x is e to the minus x squared over 2 and pretend we don't know what's the constant in front and we will still get, without knowing the 1 over square root 2 pi, we will still be able to get normal distributed samples. So that function I already sketched for you that looks like this. And without the normalizing constant we know the value at 0 equals 1. And now the next thing is we need to find a function g for the proposal density. And f of x must be less than or equal to c times g of x. That means g cannot be 0 anywhere because f is not 0 anywhere and c times g must be bigger than f so we cannot use a uniform distribution for example. Let me just show this. The uniform distribution may look like this but that would not work because that is 0 for the negative numbers and above 1. So that will never be able to satisfy that equation. What I want to do instead is now thinking of what we have done. We don't have so many distributions. If we want to do things from scratch, then what we really did was everything we can do with inverse transform method or uniform. And what I want to do here is what's sometimes called the double exponential distribution. That Let me just do the exponential. The exponential looks like this. So there the density is lambda times e to the minus lambda x. And the double exponential distribution, what this does is, it generates exponentially distributed samples and then randomly flips them over with probability one half. And the effect is that only half of the samples are here and the other half of the samples is lambda e to the minus lambda and then I need to write mod x maybe because these x are negative. And again, there isn't one half because of that random decision. And from the picture, you can already see that density has a good chance of being an envelope for f. So let's try that out. So for proposals, that x from the density, which is lambda over 2 e to the minus lambda x. So that's what I want to call g of x. And the procedure for that is generate u standard uniform. Then from the inverse transform method, we know that we can generate y equal to minus log 1 minus u over lambda to get x lambda. And then we need to flip it over into negative numbers with probability 1 half. So we know how to make random decisions. So we generate v standard uniform and then we let x be equal to y if v is less than 1 half and minus y if v is bigger than 1 half. That's how we would generate double exponential from scratch. So that is how we did exponential using inverse transform. And that is how with probability one half, we flip it over and replace y with minus y using another auxiliary random variable v. Now the question is, can we find the c with f of x less than or equal c times g of x for all x in r? And what we do here is we can, in this case, just divide by g. That is fine, because for this distribution, there's an exponential here, g is never negative. So we can do just as well divide by it. So the question is, is f over g bounded? And that's just a question about analysis. So f of x divided by g of x is e to the minus x squared over 2 divided by lambda over 2 e to the minus lambda mod x. And that's 2 over lambda e to the minus x squared over 2. And then dividing by e to the minus lambda is the same as multiplying with e to the plus lambda x. And rules for exponentials are e to the a times e to the b is e to the a plus b. So I can put the lambda mod x in the exponent here. Great. So let's find the maximum. First thing from the picture is clear, it's symmetric around zero. So everything which happens on the positive axis has a mirror image here. So we can just as well restrict x to the positive numbers for the purpose of finding c. If we find in c that 
such that we have an envelope for positive x, then the same C will work for negative x. So that equals, if we assume x is positive, 2 over lambda e to the minus x squared over 2 plus lambda just x. And now the question is, do we have a maximum? And the answer is yes, because this thing here, that is the downward facing parabola, because it's minus x squared, and it's the second order polynomial, minus x squared plus lambda x. And the exponential here is monotonic, so the maximum of this parabola will be at the same location as the maximum of the exponential. So we just need to work out where is the maximum of this parabola. And for that, the easiest is to take derivatives. So let's just do that minus x squared over 2 plus lambda x. We take the derivative and we set it equal to 0. I write exclamation mark here because that is something we don't know yet, but something we want. So that's not an equation we can use, but something we need to make true by choosing x cleverly. So let's work out this derivative. x squared c derivative is 2x, so minus 1 half x squared c derivative is minus x. Lambda x c derivative is lambda. And you see we are already done. So that equals zero if x equals lambda. So we know the parabola has the maximum at x equals lambda. And then f over g will also have the maximum at x equals lambda. So we just plug this in. So that is smaller equal 2 over lambda e to the minus. And now again, if I plug in x equals lambda, I have the maximum. So that makes it bigger compared to general x, so e to the minus lambda squared over 2 plus lambda times lambda equals 2 over lambda e to the, and now we have minus lambda squared over 2 plus lambda squared, so it's plus lambda squared over 2. And this thing here is the maximum, so we can choose this as c, and then we are good, then we have f is less than or equal to, to c times g. Good, so let's just write that all on one page. We have just established. The answer is yes, we can find such a C. So we have the envelope condition. C, we can choose any value which is greater or equal to what we just found. So 2 over lambda times e to the lambda squared over 2 is the smallest possible. And we argued we want C as small as possible. So we just take it as the maximum of this fraction and we are good. So 2 over lambda e to the lambda squared over 2 is what we use. So we have this. And let me just continue steps here. So the steps I wrote so far, they say how do we generate the proposals x from this funny double exponential density g. And now the next question is how does the rejection sampling work? It's written here. So we need another uniform. We shouldn't use u now because u we have already used for something else. And then if c times g times u is less than f, we accept. So generate, we have already used u and v, so let's say w standard uniform and then Accept x if c times g of x times w less than or equal to f of x. And if we want to, we can do it like this, or alternatively, we can simplify c times g times w less than or equal to f a bit. Let's just simplify it a bit. So c times g of x times w less than or equal to f of x is the case if and only if 2 over lambda e to the lambda squared over 2 times lambda over 2 e to the minus lambda mod x times w less than or equal to e to the minus x squared over 2. And you see we can cancel 2 over lambda and lambda over 2. And if we really want to, we can bring all the exponentials to one side. So we can write w is less than or equal to e to the minus x squared over 2. Then on the right hand side, the minus lambda x turns into plus lambda x and the lambda squared over 2 turns into minus lambda squared over 2. So that does the same thing. Maybe it looks a bit more tidy, maybe not. So let's try that in R and see whether we actually get normal distributed samples using that procedure. So what do we need? First thing, we need the functions f and g. Let's just define them as functions in R. So we say f is function, it's a function of x, and what we need is just the exponential of minus x squared over 2. 
for that is the non-normalized target density. Then G, that is the proposal density. So the proposals we need in a sense twice. We need to say what is the density and then we need to also wait to generate them separately. So the proposal density that depended on lambda, which we still need to choose. Let's put a lambda in here and let's use one as a default value. So that is lambda over two times x minus lambda times absolute value of x. So that here is the proposal density. Then we need the constant c. So c two over lambda x lambda squared over two. Ah, and here it says no symbol named lambda in scope and object lambda not found. So let's just fix this here once and for all. So we don't need that as an argument here. So I've now run the whole code. We have c is 3.29, whatever lambda we said is one, f and g are the functions we defined. So to try out whether we found the correct lambda, first I want to do a plot similar to the one I sketched, which shows f and g. So let's say x ranges from, I don't know, minus three up to three in 200 steps. Then we do plot x c times g of x. I plot this first because it's meant to be the larger of the two functions. So that fixes the scale on the y-axis and x should now fit underneath, hopefully nicely. And it worked out just as we planned it. We optimized the C correctly, namely the curves just touch at two points. Let's make the colors like we had them in the previous bit. So I do that one blue and that one black. And now we just follow the steps of the algorithm, which is, well, now we need to say how many samples. So let's do 10 to the five. Then we generate first U, R, U, N, F, N. That is standard uniform, so I don't need to set the range. Then we use our manual way of generating exponentials. One would really use R, X, P, but let's not worry. And let's just do it all from scratch once. So that generates exponentials. Then we generate our Vs, which is for flipping over the y with probability one half. So R, U, N, F, N. Then we generate the samples from the double exponential. So X is condition goes here if v is less than one half we have y and otherwise we have minus y and that we have no error message let us just try hist x that seems to work just for checking i want to generate a histogram of the proposals that is here and we can plot the density on top just to check that that gave the correct density you see that is a good fit I should probably change the range here. Let's make that marginally nicer. So I take X values from minus 10 to 10, like the histogram did it. And I do line with is two and I switch off the title on top and I do smaller margins. Let's see how that comes out. That seems nice enough. And in particular, they chose that our method here for generating samples from the double exponential distribution actually works. And as I mentioned before, we can throw out these two lines and write y is r x n lambda. Then we use the built-in method. Let's run that again. You see that gives the same result. So we have done that correctly. Now we need the rejection mechanism. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the code from our first rejection sampling example. But you see now we need to be a bit careful because what I did here is I generated just 10 to the five proposals. But in reality, we don't know how many proposals we need. That is random. So what we really need to do is we need to switch back to the scheme we used in the old code and we need to generate the proposals one by one just to be sure that we have the correct number. So let's modify that. This we don't need anymore. And this I copy down here where we need to generate our proposals. The N goes here. And now I need to modify that. We need to generate them one by one. So I write one here, one uniform, then that gives one exponential 
Here we need one more uniform. Then here we get one X, but in the logic of the old code that should be called XI. Then we say count is count plus one. That just accounts for us having generated one proposal. Then that I should call W because we have used U and V already here. And now that condition we need to replace. Namely for envelope rejection sampling, the condition is C times G times W is less than F. So let's just write that C times G of X I times W less than or equal to F of X I. Okay, and I believe that should work. So we can copy the histogram code down here. Um, ah, you see what is happening? It is still running and something has gone wrong because it says it used only 10 to the five proposals, which means it worked out all the time and also there were 50 or more warnings. We should certainly have a look at these. And they seem to be all the same. In if x times g i times ah, I believe you also see it and probably have already spotted it. I just mistyped x should have been c. Let's rerun the whole code again. Good. That is the output of the accepted samples. And I believe, let's just plot a line. Lines, let's go back to range from minus 4 to 4. Sequence, minus 4 to 4 thanks 200 and then we do lines x and here I should not plot f now because f has the wrong constant but here we know the density so in this case we can actually plot the line and d norm is the built in function for the density so I can just do that maybe I do it red again and maybe I do it with line width 2 that seems like a very good fit so we have successfully generated samples from a standard normal distribution using only elementary means and rejection sampling. So let's go through the steps. This lambda we can still choose for efficiency if we want to. Correctness doesn't depend on it. Here we do the non-normalized target density. That is the density of a normal distribution with the one over square root two pi omitted because in the example we pretend we don't know it. That does have the correct constant lambda over two in front is the density of the proposals. We checked we have this right. This is the constant such that f is less than c times g. And we checked in the plot here still is that we got the constant right. Then that we can actually comment out because it's no longer needed. That was the plot I just showed you for checking. Then here is how many normal distributed samples we are trying to generate. That is the vectors I go in. That is a rejection mechanism, and now that is a bit more complicated than it was because this is what we use for random number generation. And then here is the accept reject decision, and you see it worked. And we did use quite a few samples. So we used 131,000 to get 10,000 outputs. So here, less than 10% of the samples are actually used. There is one thing we could still optimize by choosing different values of lambda. We can maybe get better efficiency and one can work that out analytically. But here, I just try to just as an experiment and see what happened. So that made it worse. You see 100,000 before and now we needed more samples. So instead, let's try 0.5. That also made it worse. So I would conclude one was maybe not so bad. And again, one can do that analytically. Good. And that is how you would generate normal distributed samples from scratch using rejection sampling. I should just mention the built-in R norm method in R uses a much more efficient method and it is written in C or assembler or something faster than R code. So R norm will be much, much, much faster than what we have just done. But still, we have understood rejection sampling and how it can be used. And if that was not the normal distribution, but a distribution with no name, which is not built into R, we can still use this method and still get a result. Good. So that concludes our example. Okay. So this is how envelope rejection sampling can be used. And we are nearly done with the contents of this section. There is one more video to come. And in this last video, I will discuss some additional aspects about efficiency of the method and how we should choose the function g. So thanks for watching.